Hello everyone, uh, I thought I would just, I don't know, produce this fun Nerf gun vid video that I made for a friend. So, this is a Nerf like takedown or knockout, I forgot the name of it. And it basically is just like a Nerf pump action shotgun that I decided to gussy up for one of my brother's little friends. And overall I thought it was a kind of an entertaining subject, so I decided to do a time lapse and a quick voiceover about it and just what it was about so basically it was like a nerf takedown or knockout i don't really remember the name of it but that doesn't really matter so all i did was spray paint and the darn nerf gun with just like a flat black primer that stuck really well after i sanded it so i sanded the whole thing down and then i painted it which i didn't really show because it wasn't very interesting but i spray painted it down and i masked off the I guess you can say handle grip area because I kind of like that flat black kind of matte color gloss almost it was like a glossy mixed up a matte color it's kind of weird but I like the color of that on the grip because I was going for like a polymer kind of imitation grip and I also masked off the trigger a little bit because I thought I was going to keep it orange but it just didn't look right because I thought the orange was going to contrast a little better but it's such a harsh orange it just didn't really work out so then I started doing um, like a little bit of thinking. I'm like, I think this goldish color I have in acrylic would be really nice and it would work pretty well. And it's easy to work with. So I basically did all the little extremities and cool parts that would look good in this bronzy gold color. And I just colored them in with um, a simple paintbrush. First off, I didn't mask very well at first, but then I'm like, no, whatever. It's taking too long to wipe off all the excess. So I decided just to start masking after the first try. I ended up doing two coats and I did one off camera because it wasn't very interesting and yeah basically that's what I did I decided to do the bolts almost a black gold hue too because I thought it looked really cool and I noticed that um it was really hard to paint the top of the bolts and wipe off the excess and so I found out if I just wiped it a little bit it had gold on the deeper parts of the, like the fake bolts and um, black on the top I thought it added some really cool contrast overall. This thing had a, this thing was a pain. Like these large brass looking instruments, like panel things, were just a pain. The little tiny like divots here and there that I just filled with like the brassy gold color, those were pretty easy overall and pretty enjoyable to do. So that was basically the first half of it is me just painting it in. Then I painted in the safety. I did that. That was relatively easy as well. Then I move on to the weathering. Which is overall the most challenging part of any model that I've ever done. You, if that's like a model tank or a plane or a Nerf gun, for instance. It's always annoying to do because you want to do the same amount on every side. But you also don't want it to be so, like, this exactly the same. You want it to look different and have character. So it's really hard to mimic, but also be, I guess you could say, like, original completely on one side and not be, I don't know, too excessive or too skimpy on one side for weathering and not the other. So I basically just went around on all the edges of the panels, of which would be exposed if you were walking around with this thing in a woodland area or something like that. And I just scuffed up those areas with some silverish acrylic paint. It was like kind of like a gunmetal paint that I had laying around. And I just basically went over all the areas. I specifically went over the lower portions of the blaster because I would imagine those areas would get a lot more wear and tear from fingernails or like grabbing the gun or you're putting it in a holster or in a bag a rucksack and that's an area that's sticking out a little bit more so I would imagine that would get a lot more traffic same with like the um I guess you could say slide release I put a lot of weathering on that because that's an area of high traffic I also did some scuffs just with the, some fun little paint scratches. Basically, I went around and scuffed it up, and just dragging the paintbrush and doing fun, cool um, scratches to see how it would look like and kind of just experimenting with new techniques. The top of the rail was probably the most annoying to do out of the entire project because it was just doing the same thing over and over and over again. But overall, it did come out pretty well, I thought. I think it, I probably went a little extreme in some of the areas with... The weathering on the rail, I probably could have done a little less, but whatever. Overall, it came out pretty well. 
I did notice, I believe the the side we're doing right now is the left side. <laughs> it had way more weathering than the right side. So I corrected that off camera a little bit before I gave the gift to my brother's friend. Um, and yeah, I kind of corrected, made both sides look even. <laughs> Overall, um, the set, the right side, the second side, I guess you could say, was a lot easier to do and it took me probably about half the time according to the time lapse footage because I already knew what I was doing. So I really wasn't too worried about, oh, I got to make this thing look super good because I was kind of already warmed up and doing weathering because I already did it for a couple hours. Not hours, probably, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes, almost an hour. So I was already basically warmed up after taking a tiny bit of a break to get something to eat. I was like, hey, I got my mindset. I can do this very quickly. And I did it in almost, I almost half the time that it took to do the other side. Because I knew what to do and I knew what, I knew what looked good. Because in some of these weathering, um, I guess you could say adventures when you're weathering something. It, weathering really displays a look of something. If you do a lot, it's going to show that it's kind of battle torn and it's been used a lot. If you do it lightly, it could portray that it has been used but not nearly as much. Maybe something of a more recreational use. I was kind of looking for something like a monster hunter with this. Something that would be out in the rough a lot and be used daily. And maybe carried around on just a lanyard hanging on someone's hip. So it's pretty banged up. But not to the point of where it's been completely, I guess you could say, abused. But overall, just pretty worn out. Thank you for listening. That's basically, it was just a little tiny voiceover of this fun video that I thought I would take. Thank you.